okay why we are using the mini tab because fortune 50 uh, fortune 1000 organization out of which 50% are using a mini tab for their analysis purpose data analysis purpose and you will be surprised to know you know microsoft has excel and different their software but microsoft also uses mini tab for their statistical analysis and other things so this is very very simple tool and uh, you will learn it if you have you know if you have excel knowledge or any other software spss or statistica this is you know easiest among all so uh preparation uh uh so basically preparation to be successful you need to read the chapter before class and ask the questions uh so you are responsible and so this is what you know we have uh, since you know we don't have office hours you can always communicate me through canvas and you know when i am available you are available we can come together on canvas and we can discuss so it's a based on mutual availability and we don't have uh, any other resource you know uh, like you know we used to have different uh, help now you can create your groups you can talk you can discuss so quizzes uh, we have you know assessment is divided into four pieces quiz which is you can do multiple attempts and that will have 20 percent and discussion is basically every week we will have the discussion that is just finding the application of the concept in your professional workplace or professional life where you can align the concept you know teaching the concept i will be covering the concept but how you can see the use of the concepts or you know tools and techniques in your professional life that is about the discussion so relating assignment basically mini tab you have to solve the assignments on mini mini tab you need to import on on word document and submit so this is uh, some people ask me why you are not accepting different formats why only word documents because uh, sometimes what happen people solve on paper and they write and i don't understand the handwriting so i don't want you know you to go into or i don't understand the handwriting therefore it's always good to type in word document and you know basically you get automatically everything from mini tab just you have to type your decision interpretation this is what is expected in word document and final exam is all about 20 percent so basically this is the 100 percent or this is the course uh, assessment that will be divided into four pieces there is a 15 percent daily penalty for late submission this is most important for each assignment quiz at discussion and maximum three days are allowed for late submission so monday evening is the monday 11 59 pm is the uh, due time after that tuesday wednesday and thursday thursday evening is the you know end date so basically only three days are allowed maximum and uh, this is all at the end of we will have the final exam final exam is december 1st 2020 so please mark this date right on your calendar we will not have any changes and that will be from 6 to 8 pm 6 to 8 pm means i will come right here you will be doing there it will be only available for two hours 6 to 8 pm on december 1st we don't have any group assignments and this is the universal universally same in in ew the grade percentage numerical grade letter so this is uh, so you can see there is no difference uh, the class is online so this is all 
we will be meeting every tuesday at 6 pm using zoom uh, other things you can see they are similar to you know university so i don't want to say anything uh, about these things because they are almost same every uh, course uh, and they are all same throughout the university in all courses and only i would like to say about dss uh, you know one thing is there university allow because we already allow 7 days per uh, assignment means assignment starts on tuesday ends on on uh, monday evening 7 days are enough to do assignments however for exam you know we have exam so instead of 2 hours for dss person university has a rule uh, dss person should get double of the time so instead of 2 hours it will be 4 hours of exam for dss person if i have you know request or you know i if i get request from university or the uh, application or you know the it is in my co course uh, uh, you know class roster so this will be only extra thing is there and these are all things so today what we are going to cover we are going to cover uh, chapter 4 7 8 of of uh, the book which is also BADM 503 concepts and then we will cover conditional probability hypothesis testing regression analysis forecasting quality tools techniques multi criteria decision making earned value analysis uh, so basically these two things uh, two three things we don't have in book you know these contents are covered from uh, outside the book so i will provide all the material handouts for these techniques so so basically you know those who are uh, eastern washington student those who have done basic uh, previous courses or under they have already studied this part for them it would be you know these two three things will be new so and this, this is what we will cover in this course basically this is the course content if you have any question related to syllabus feel free to ask for the final exam what is it like being covered so in the final exam everything from here to here you know it will be uh, exam you will have the 10 questions and you have to solve and you have to upload right on my you know canvas so this is what is the final exam means you will get the question you have to solve on muni tab using data and other things data will be provided you have to uh, 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 make the word file and upload right there on canvas Am I able to answer your question? Yes, you did. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question, if you have, please let me know. Okay, now I'm going through some of the basic concepts, uh, you know, please, uh, I would, because this week we don't have any assignment, anything. So please uh, read chapter number four, seven and eight from the book. So, so to refresh your knowledge to, you know, review your, you know, past uh, uh, skills. So chapter number four, seven, eight. Before going into the content, I would like to share some of the important aspect here. So this is, okay, here we have the resources. Uh, can you see this? Here we have the syllabus. Here we have the windows for, uh, sorry, mini tab for windows and Mac. 
so look into this and uh, those who have windows they can uh, download this file those who have mac they can download this file once you download this is an installer you can install at the last last option when you are about to finish the installation process it will ask the license select the license method if you have product key license server and license file what you need to do we have the license file right here can you see this this please don't you know please don't forget to use this license file in this last option to select license file uh, this license is good till i think july 31st 2021 so this is almost a uh, you know 10 11 months uh, license available for everyone so please download please use this second thing uh if you don't use this license file and you do the continue continue what will happen it will be defaultly available for you for 30 days and 30 days means i mean after that it will ask like 1100 1200 dollars so if you why mistake do you know then remove and reinstall and you know use the license key license key again is good till uh here july 31st 2021 so this is mini tab that we have on for our course uh, i uh, just included this open so statistics book you know this is also a good book which is available free of cost and can be uh, this can be also mini tab can be also accessed through virtual lab i don't want to go into the virtual lab you just type your id and password you will get into that and you use virtual lab through amazon web services we have with the university so use amazon i mean this is another option for using mini tab and this is mini tab getting started for mac mini tab getting started for windows so if you look into this uh, it has you know basic uh, getting started with mini tab you know all the information screenshots how to get you know what function and everything is right you know given here so basically uh, this is the option if you want to this is a manual of mini tab basically mini tab study card this is a study card which can give you but it is So taking a little bit time. Anyway, this is a two, three page or four page, you know, um, briefly. Yeah, I think you can see. So basically this is two couple of pages, Pearson, how you can do different uh, statistics, how you can do different, you know, graphs. So this is the basic. So, so this is also available right here and then a meet your faculty getting started and then so basically you have all the resources right here and uh, i'm also available you know i will be teaching everything how we can use which functions so you don't need to worry about mini tab but in case you get stuck use these and you know tons of resources are available on youtube and different open sources or different platforms you can feel free to use those i'm one of your resource in order to help you to learn the subject matter and now let's go over uh, yes so basically first thing you know two important concepts come into the statistics and one is 
mean and second is the standard deviation if you use any calculation any you know calculation or any concept you know these two are very important like hypothesis testing regression many things are there you know where you know for example the quality tools mean and standard deviation are important here three characteristics of data numerical data center variability and shape so basically these can be explained center can be explained through uh, you know mean mode me median variability can be explained by uh, by variance and standard deviation and same shape is you know skewness and curtesis so basically you know what is mean mean is nothing but a average median is median is center point of the data if you arrange the data in order and the center point of the data is or center point of entire uh, arrangement is median please don't hesitate to ask if you come across uh, you know any concept that is not uh, you know explained properly or you don't get it so mean is this median is this mode what is the mode mode is the most occurring or most repeated or most frequently occurring data value in any data data set that is called mode so these are the three three important you know statistics which explain the center of the data and here you can understand if you have mean equal to i hope you can under, see my slides properly if mean equal to mode equal to median we can get very very symmetric uh, you know curve so very very symmetric you know if these are almost same this is if mean is less median is more mode is more then we have a skewed left and if it is opposite this is skewed right so this is the shape based on mean mode median based on mean mode median you can understand the shape of the curve a geometric mean is another thing that is used for financial or economic or growth related calculation so this is a you know geometric mean so suppose uh, uh, you know these 1 2 3 4 5 year 2006 to 2000 this is a revenue what is the revenue growth and you know average growth rate from 2006 to 2010 you don't need to just you know do the you know this the you can use the uh geometric mean for this so always use the geometric mean whenever you need to see the growth or financial uh In growth then use this a uh, mid range is the middle point of upper and lower you know when you do the minimum x minimum value plus maximum value divided by 2 that is mid range a range is highest to lowest value uh, so that is a range now most important thing which is called variance and the standard deviation if you get this uh, concept very clear because you know oh, this is the most important um, uh, uh, parameters in the statistics after mean so let me explain this in 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 simple uh, concept using whiteboard uh, just a minute Mm. 
Okay. Let's say we have a data here, right here. We have a age. I'm taking, you know, five, six values simply. And someone is five years old. Someone is seven years old. Someone is eight years old. Someone is six years old. Someone is four, uh, let's say four years old. What is the average of this? 5 plus 7, 12 plus is 20 plus this 30. So that a total age is 30. What is the mean of this? Mean is 5, which is 6. Okay, 6 is the. Now let me, uh, you know, subtract with this. So 5 minus 6. 7 minus 6. 8 minus 6. 6 minus 6 and 4 minus 6. What we get here? Minus 1. 1. We get 2. We get 0. And we get minus 2. What if we do the sum of all? Sum of all will be zero. Therefore, this, you know, one another thing can be possible here. Instead of doing the sum, we can take the absolute value of this. So I, I can do this absolute value. Absolute value of one is one. I'm just, you know, writing absolute value of one is one again means what is the absolute value? This is the symbol. Let's say minus five absolute value. What is the minus five absolute value is five. That means the sign doesn't matter. All will be in positive numbers. So minus or plus all will be the positive numbers. Two will be two. Zero will be zero and this two will be two. And then I do the sum. So 2 plus 2 plus 2 becomes 6. This is another concept. We will use this part for later on. Instead of doing this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the square of this. Means minus 1 and minus 1, how much? Minus 1 and minus 1 plus 1. Plus 1, 1 uh, square is 1. What is the square of 2 into 2 is 4. And minus 2 into minus 2 is 4. What is the value we get here? 8. If you see this, this is the... Okay. Now, so see, let me go back on my... Uh, So look into this. What is the sigma? Sum of 1 to n x i minus mu to squares, which we have just done, which is 10 divided by 5. So 10 divided by 5, n equal to 5, which is coming 2. This upper factor, we have 10 divided by 1. A bit divided by 5, we have number of elements, 5. So this is going to be sigma square is going to be two. Look into these two numbers, two formula. What do you see the difference? The difference you can see here is capital N, here is a minus, my, a, cap, a small n minus one. So if you look into the both equations, the only thing is this. Here sigma square, here s square. So if you remember, this is parameter and this is the statistics. Uh, if you remember the statistics concept, because you are directly into the uh, 520 and those who have, please remember that this is used for population. Sigma is used for population. Sigma square is population. This is sigma square is variance. S square is sample variance. And this is population variance. 
this is divided by capital n means populations this is divided by small n means sample minus 1 which will be higher so when you do any calculator use any calculation number you, you know you get two sigma one is population one is sample sample one is little bit higher than population because the denominator is n minus 1 here is n so always remember the uh, notations which are used in statistics sigma square s square now let me go back on so similarly uh, this is variance and a standard deviation is this means nothing but just a square root of we have just removed the square from here from here each side and uh, just put here so i'm going back on my whiteboard okay so hey sorry this is sorry this is 10 not 8 i i just do it please correct me so this is 10 4 plus 4 8 plus 2 10 so sigma square equal to i'm just considering i'm not going for sample 10 divided by how many what is the 5 so sigma square equal to 2 what is the variance for this and what is the standard deviation if i want to know about this is a square root of 2 that you can calculate it is 1 point something so sigma square is 2 and sigma is an square root of 2 so what do you see the relationship between a standard deviation and uh, and uh, this so variance equal to uh, equal to standard deviation square so that you can you can if you know either of them you can calculate very simply because in many numericals it is given variance in many standard deviation so this is the thing now let me go through one more concept so suppose in in a class let me erase this form uh, part okay so this is variance in the standard deviation let me give you one this is called mean absolute deviation what is the main absolute deviation where you consider the absolute value sum of absolute values divided by n so what is the sum of absolute value that we have done it's a six so what would be the main absolute value uh, mean absolute deviation for our uh, this which is six divided by five so which is one point how much five one so one point two one point two is mean absolute deviation now let's go back into the application part of this so you get it uh, so far so good am i making it complex or because i'm just explaining i thought you know everything this so just going through this is it making sense to everyone you can just type yes or no in the chat box oh that's great thank you now okay now i give the practical example of a standard deviation by you know aeroplane so okay now let's look into the uh, where is the 
Okay. So think about this part. Let's say this is a air strip or you know runway of the plane. And you know, this is a central line which you can see on every runway is there. Most of the time, most of the time, or you know, frequently, you know, this most of the time when plane take off and land, they follow their this line means they're always always the front landing gear should be right on this line what if this you know the landing gear debates here let's say the this is the you know one plane landed this is the deviation from the standard okay let's say this is the a condition let's say this is b condition where landing gear is here okay let's say this is a c condition the landing gear is right here so this is b this is c this is c what do you think which one is which one is having highest risk of uh, going out of runway See? Certainly C because it is almost, you know, going out of the, which one is the uh, second one, second highest risk? See? Obviously B and the uh, A is the, you know, third highest. What do you prefer here? You know, what is your option? Suppose you are the pilot. What is your preference? This is, let's say, O. Oh. Always O. Means, you know, if you are a pilot, always you try to land right on this. So there will be no deviation. Similarly, here I have, a, you know, the data here. Here I have data. If, if you know, in my class, all the students are five years of age. Let's say all students who have, or let's say six years of age, whatever number. So let me erase this. All. Okay, so in my class, you know, this is my first student is five years old, second is five years old, third is five years old, fourth is five years old, fifth is five years old, their average is five, and then when I subtract five into five, what do I get? I get zero, 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 zero. In this case, what would be my standard deviation? Exactly, it's a zero. So what is the preferred value of sigma? So this is an ideal condition. This is an ideal condition where everyone in my class is five years old. So zero is practically not possible, lastly. So what we can say, close to zero, or you know, or you can say minimum. What you can say, minimum. So higher is the standard deviation means what will you understand? Higher is the standard deviation. How do you interpret higher value of standard deviation? Ideal. Yeah, means it is data is high variability is there in the data. You know, so high variability is there in the data. If so, you know, what is the, you know, and therefore high risk, you know, so again, I go on this flight. 
here we have c has the highest risk this b has second highest risk a has you know third highest risk and o has no risk or zero means no risk so therefore sigma is also six sigma if you remember if you know or you know six sigma if you know this thing six is the number sigma is the standard deviation this is the stand industry standard and do you know what is the meaning of this out of million out of 1 million products or out of any 1 million items how many 3.14 defects are possible means out of 1 million uh, package if ups is delivering to the customers every day i think ups and fedex they together deliver almost 20 million packages every day that means out of 20 million packages are delivered by let's say ups delivers only 10 million packages a day if they deliver 10 million package a day how many packages they can miss or you know how the many package they can deliver out of uh, out of you know or don't deliver on time or don't deliver on particular proper address in a day exactly 3.14 into 10 which is 30 1.4 or you know you can say 32 roughly or you know within a range of 100 so ups is following uh, uh uh this um what you call say six sigma motorola motorola is the company which uh started the concept of philosophy of six sigma i'm uh, uh, actually i'm six sigma green belt certified so i have six sigma green belt so basically this is the concept of sigma of variance or standard deviation if you understand so this 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 you know ideal situation is not possible but you know close to ideal is possible means you need to be very precise with product specification with service specification with dimension with everything then you don't deviate from the central line you don't deviate from the mean you don't deviate from the you know this center point and you have the consistency and you have so this is the concept of uh standard deviation now let me new sir so coefficient of variation here you know this is variance and standard deviation coefficient of variation which is 100 multiplied by a small s and a small x bar x bar is sample mean and sample standard deviation this is called coefficient of variance mean absolute deviation we just see that you know what is if you take absolute value and you know that this is also explains the variability uh so so basically center versus variability this is actual and this is desired this is desired this is actual so uh here you know you have to understand basically this is not important let me go into the this very important uh, diagram that you can keep in your mind empirical rule what is empirical rule so basically this is a center point or this is a mu is a population mu is normally referred as a population mean so this is a mean mean minus 1 sigma mean minus 1 sigma how much is the value and mu mu plus 1 sigma so between this range 68. 26% of the data will be within mean plus 2 sigma mean plus uh, mean uh, it is called 2 sigma basically so mean plus minus 1 sigma within this range 2 sigma range this is called sigma and sigma 2 sigma range the value of 2 sigma is 68% what is the value of 4 sigma 4 sigma mu minus 2 sigma mu plus 2 sigma so this is 2 plus 2 4 sigma the value is 95.44% this is a 6 sigma mu minus 3 sigma mu plus 3 sigma within this range 
three sigma plus three sigma minus, you will get ninety nine point seven three percent of the data. So if you understand this, it's a very important. If I ask what is the so this is two four and six sigma value. If I ask what is the value of uh, you know uh, two sigma uh, sorry sigma three sigma and five sigma, can you uh, tell me what is the value of sigma two sigma and three sigma? Sigma three sigma and five sigma. Okay, I go here. And can you see my mini tab? I'm just showing you. So look into that. If four sigma is 95.44, what would be the value of three sigma, five sigma? Any guess, any? Just think about that. But do you mean like greater than 95% but less than 97? Greater than 97. Or 99, whatever the six one was. Uh, so actually, let me go back on slide. So two sigma is 68.26%. What would be the value of one sigma? So let's keep it very simple. Two is 68.26. So normally what people do, they divide 68 with two. So they get 34.13%. Is it true? If I say two sigma is 68.26%, one sigma is 34.13%. Is it true or not? Sure, I think so. Hmm. so then five would be between 90, whatever the middle is between 95.44 and 99.73. Yeah. Okay, now let me explain. So basically, it is not like that. You know, one sigma means minus half sigma this side, minus half, plus half sigma this side. Three sigma means 1.5 sigma on this side, 1.5 sigma on this side. Five sigma means 2.5 sigma this side, and 2.5 sigma is this side. So basically, this is ideal case two, three, six sigma, two, four, six sigma. You can choose any you know numbers what is the value between these sigmas and how you can do here you have the option so what is the option can you see my mini tab if you can yeah. see yes so under this we have probability distribution plot under this we have view probability okay here, you know, for standard normal distribution, mean is always zero, standard deviation is always one. How I will explain what is the stand, normal standard deviation and why mean is always zero, standard deviation is always one. 
so now go to the shaded area so x values you need a shaded which areas you can get these two values so you can put any two you know x value so i'm just going to put minus 0.5 and i'm going to put 0.5 these are the two here you can see this is 0.5 to 0.5 what is the value i am getting here we say you know have 68 point uh, something 68.26 percent of two sigma now one sigma is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 here how much is coming 38 percent so you it is not likely you know that you can divide and you can make you know two similarly i'm going to do five sigma what is the value of four sigma is 95.44 let's see what is the value of five sigma so i go again graph probability distribution plot i'm going to use this uh, okay and i'm going to do here i'm going to do here 1.5 sigma so i put here one and here i put one. Oh, sorry we need to do five sigma so i'm just going to do two and here two okay correct look into the value of what is the value of four sigma is 95.44 5 sigma is 98.76, 6 sigma is 97.33. What is the value of 3 sigma? Again, I go here, probability distribution. I use this, I go this, shaded area, x value. I'm not checking the probability, I'm just checking x value. And here I just put 1.3, 1.5, and I go with 1.5. And this is the value of three sigma is 86.64 percent uh 90 yeah so yeah lastly what is the meaning of five sigma that means 98.76 percent data within this range so now let's go so if you understand this uh, you know values and sigmas now let me go further what is the standard normal distribution so a standardized variable so let me get uh, some values uh, some data that can help us to uh, do some calculation look into this formula zi z is equal to xi minus mu upon the standard deviation or zi zi equal to xi minus x bar di uh, divided by standard deviation means this is the mu or x bar is the average of the data average or mean of the data a standard deviation is population or sample standard deviation xi means or xi here is the individual value so if you know the entire uh, data mean or uh, and entire data set standard deviation and divide with individual values then you can get a standardized values means everything will be converted into a standardized value so i'm just going to check and i'm just going to pull one of the data set and then we'll work over here just a minute uh, file open desktop Okay, I have some data right here. So this is a GRE score, you know, for master's program in US University, we need to have GRE score. 
So I'm just using a ZRE score. So if I do this CRE score, I would like to convert this entire data into a standardized format. How I can convert? First, I need to take average of entire this thing and the standard deviation of everything and then do the calculation based on Z formula. Instead of that, I can do here, I can put here standardized. Uh, value look into that i go here calculate uh, uh, stand, can you see the standardized value here standardized under calculate if you see this okay what is the input column i am taking gre what is the where i am going to store i am going to store in c11 okay so this is the standardized data means this value whatever is the average if average is less than this value means this value will come positive divided by standard deviation so here you can see now if i take the if i take the average and the standard deviation of this standard deviation will come one and mean is coming zero so for standardized normal distribution mean is always zero and the standard deviation is always one so i'm just going to go statistics basic statistics and descriptive statistics and i can go on standardized data i just need two numbers mean and i need only standard deviation nothing else i need Can you see this? If you can see this is mean is always zero and the standard deviation is always one for a standardized normal distribution. And that is what we do here on Minitab when, uh, when we do this, where statistics, be, uh, sorry, graph, all the graphs are under this graph option and we have to do a probability and here therefore when we do this normal mean is always zero and the standard deviation is always one is it making sense but suppose you want to do that you suppose you want to do some changes for example i want to know this is a ZRE score of 500 students. Where is the 90%? Where is the 95%? So I can do that, you know. In order to do that, what I need to do, I have to get the mean and the standard deviation of this. So let me do this statistics, basic statistics, descriptive statistics, and I can go for ZRE score and I can get right here okay this is mean is 316.47 and median is 317 based on that i can do also calculation i can do graph probability distribution i can go here here mean i can put 316.47 divided by a hey, sorry standard deviation is 11.30 this is that now i need to do i can get to know you know what is the probability what is the cutoff value you know when suppose this is the data if suppose i am scoring 320 in what percentile of his score i am coming my score is 320 and this is uh, you know entire sample mean and standard deviation i would like to know in what percentage percentile i am coming you can see this is the so he i need to make it so 316 is a mean so certainly you know i have 320 which is above 50 percent so i am above 50 percent what what you know this is 37.74 so and this is remaining so basically i'm coming under 38 means 72 no 62 percentile my score is in 
72 percentile. Now I would like to check based on this GRE, what would be the 90th percentile score? So I go here under graph, probability distribution. Here I go, okay. And this is the number I would like to know probability and I would like to know probability of 90 percentile or or I can say I want to know this night. Okay. I want to know this point nine percentile. Okay. So someone who is scoring 331, they are coming about 90 percentile because this is the point below 90 percentile is there. Is it making sense to everyone? Yes. Okay, that's great, thank you. So this is the basic concept and this is the uh, a uh, standardized variable and st normal standard deviation. Uh, there's another way to estimate the sigma. How do we estimate the sigma? Because within six sigma, you know, within six sigma, how much data is coming? 99.73% data is there within six sigma. So if you know the range, range is highest value minus lowest value. Range divided by six sigma, you know, six sigma equal to almost range. So this is also, you know, way to uh, calculate sigma and therefore range divided high minus low divided by six, then you can get to know sigma. Uh, if you know the percentile quartiles, uh, you know, I don't need to say just because I explained uh, percentile part here. So this is like 91 percentile. This is, uh, you know, different percentile. So 91 percentile, you can see quartiles and other things. I hope everyone knows. Now I would like to explain the, so this is from chapter number four. Correlation is the relationship between two variables. So normal distribution is all about this. You can do inverse normal, which I have just done for 91 percentile. So six sigma, one sigma, two sigma, three sigma. So let's say, you know, in similar manner, suppose John took an economic exam and scored 86 points the class mean was 75 with a standard deviation seven what percentile is john in that is what so basically we would like to know what is the john percentile based on mean and the standard deviation of the class we can simply you know do this 75 and 7 and 86 three numbers so i'm just going to do graph probability distribution and uh, 75 is the mean the standard deviation and said area what is the x value john scored uh, he scored how much 86 if i'm correct uh, 86 75 and okay look into this what is the percentile he is in can you see it's 94 percentile 94.2 so basically this is the and here you can say 94.2 or 94.18 so john is approximately 94th percentile so uh because we have covered almost different uh, uh, distribution, binomial, poison, triangular, exponential, different distribution that we have covered in 503. You know, when you have n value is higher, all distribution belong to, or all distribution follow the normal distribution. 
so all distribution follow normal distribution and now another thing is confidence interval this is another important and most important thing what is the confidence interval let me explain here uh, so basically we are going to deal with inferential statistics inference we are going to draw the inference based on sample about population so inferential statistics is taking a sample from population and draw the inference about population so basically every year this is the example i normally give to my 503 student for example every year almost uh 1.2 million international students come to united state for pursuing their higher education if that is correct almost uh 300000 students no there are 1.2 million international students across us almost 300 comes every year new students every year and almost 22 25000 students from india they get into united states for their higher education if that now i would like to know i would like to know what is the true what is the uh, popular what is the uh, all 22000 or 25000 indian students average gre score what is the average gre score of all 22000 students those who are coming to us it's a very difficult to get the data of all 22000 if i have to go to everyone then only i can get to know i will not have this time and you know uh, ability to reach all the people what i have done i have collected the sample of these 500 indian students Uh, if you can see right here these 500 students is right here and their gre score is this if their gre score is this okay now let me get the confidence interval so i go under statistics i have one sample z test uh, or i have from summarized data and i have different options so basically i am using or i can use one sample t test because this is a sample so i am using one sample t test so i take a z perform i am not using i am not performing here is 95% i am just using 95 by default you can choose 99 98 whatever so by default here can you see this confidence interval for mu 95% confidence interval for mu what is the you know what is the uh, inference that i can draw based on this 500 sample about five uh, about 22000 student i can i am 95% confidence what i can say i am 95 confidence that the true population means true 22000 in indian students are coming their average would be 300 between 315 to 0.48 to 317.46 means i cannot point the exact value that you know the, i'm 95% confidence that you know the all 22000 students coming their true populations uh, mean would be uh, 316.4 no i can't say that but you know i can get the confidence interval but i can get the range between that range the true population mean will be there but i am 95% you know 5% cases you know still i have 5% uncertainty or 5% confidence i don't have so this is the meaning of confidence interval confidence interval can be based on mean proportion so it can be based on mean it can be based on proportion is it making sense 
does it change if you put a 99% confidence? Exactly. If you put a 99% means your confidence will be broader. That means the range will be broader. So look into this. Thank you for asking question. So I go again, basic statistics, one sample, and then I put uh, option here, I put 99, let's say. It will be broader. So here, you know, earlier it was how much? Let me go. 315.48 to 317.46. Now I put because you know you have more you know confidence, then it will be wider range. So it is 3.315.16 and 317.78. Now let's put more than a sorry uh, 90 percent only then your confidence interval will be narrower because you have you are taking 10 percent risk so look into that stat uh, uh, basic 1t option i'm going to put here only 90 percent so low confidence means Narrower the here you can see 315.64 to 317.46 means basically 0.6 within 0.6 decimal point uh, decimal six point you are 90 or I am 90 percent confidence that true all 22,000 students population mean will be within this range which is just you know so if you have higher confidence means you have wider range. If you have lower confidence, you have narrower range. Is it making sense? So, so, yeah, so this is basically, we are not going to use all these calc, I mean, these uh, formula or all these uh, you know equations what we are going to use we are going to use the data we are going to pull that data and put into the mini tab and going to interpret the result and understand the result this is what we are going to do so basically here you know one more thing which is important here so this is confidence interval confidence interval means this range in which you are confident let's say i said 95 percent that means 95 percent is this range that means two and half percent on left side two and half percent on right side you know this population mean can fall and that is the rejection reason this is called alpha or this is called significance level so confidence interval is this significance level is one minus confidence interval if i am saying uh, 95 percent confidence level then i i'm you know same time saying five percent significance level so confidence level so here you can see 99 percent and uh, so so basically if i say confidence or uh, significance they are in you know alternative word but you know need to know what is the meaning of that so what i missed one thing so here you can see the true population mean will be between upper and lower limit of confidence interval and you can clearly get the z value of 90 percent confidence 95 98 99 so clearly you can see what is the 90 percent 95 percent 99 i can just demonstrate is 1.64 z is 1.96 and all you can get to know so let me show you what is the value of so stat basic st hey, sorry graph probability distribution i'm going to do it uh, for zero and one i'm just considering no standard normal shaded area i am going to ch ch check 90 percent so here is 90 percent 
do i need to get one side or two side i can decide myself or you know so oh i did oppose it mm. so what is the shaded area suppose i need to get the two values so 90% center 90% center means 5% here and 5% there so this is i'm just going to 0.5 and i'm going to put here 0 0.0, 0 0.95 so the oh hmm. this is always an issue So, point zero five or point one. So you can see this point one. You know this five percent here, five percent here. So this is the the value should be within this range, and this is the center point. You know this is the white part is confidence and red part is rejection region or significance level. So for all the values, you can do this. Uh, another thing is uh, degree of freedom. What is called degree of freedom? You know, here degree of freedom is N minus one. See, if you have, we have three things. One is Z test, one is T test, one is when do we use Z test? You can clearly see in mini tab. If you go statistics, basic statistics, one sample Z. This Z is, you know, you can take, but you should have known standard deviation. Means if you know the population standard deviation, then only you can use a Z test. If you don't know the population standard deviation, you go for T test. Basically, here you don't need to put the standard deviation and it will directly do that. So the difference between Z and T, when you know the uh, population standard deviation, use Z, otherwise use T. And after this, uh, degree of freedom N minus one indeed which is if there are 30 number 30 sample size then 30 minus 1 which is 9 29 is the degree of freedom so this is you know uh, so so confidence interval for proportion that you can also do here confidence interval for proportion when we go in a stat basic statistics under this we have one proportion test so this is also can be done so this is about uh, i would like to cover in you know first class about uh, you know 503 and basic concepts if this is clear to all of you i would request you this week to practice some questions on chapter four, chapter seven, and chapter eight. We don't have any assignment because, you know, this is just refresher. We will have the next uh, class, which is uh, next uh, Tuesday, and then we will have the assignment and everything from there onwards. Any question, anything, if you have, please let me know. You can install the mini tab on your computer and we will do some practice everything in the class from next class i have a question yes please so to prepare for next week do you want us to read chapter two four and seven or do yeah. we read the one four that's assigned to week two that was like chapter one I think for if you want to, you know, for preparing for next week, you have, you know, next week, uh, uh, let me open the syllabus. Chapter number, please read the chapter number five, which is important for uh, next week class. So if you read chapter five, 
conditional probability and decision uh, decision tree and the base theorem so please read chapter number 5 for that and just practice you know some example from chapter 7 4 7 8 to brush your knowledge to you know have some hand on mini tab so for next week chapter 5 please read before class thank you you're welcome any other question if you have please let me know yeah one more last thing yeah what i will do so for example this is uh, the module one right after this i will place the video or you know recording of this lecture right here so whenever you just want to see the recording you can just go here and you can see the recording after every week so you don't need to uh, you know ask me you know within hour or two i will put the recording here because it will be converted and you know formatting and everything so it will take or by tomorrow morning you can see the recording right here always every week okay any question you have please review chapter 4 7 and 8 for your knowledge read chapter 5 for next week class and we don't have any assignment this week thank you thank you bye bye thank you bye good night